What is ATP and how is it used during exercise? Stick around and find out. The only form of energy your body can use is in the form of a molecule called ATP, which stands for adenosine triphosphate. Imagine your body is a car. ATP would be the gasoline you consistently need to keep it running. That is, unless you're driving an electric car. So, whether you're walking up the stairs, going for a jog, or pumping some iron, your body will need ATP to fuel your activity. ATP is a big and heavy molecule, so we cannot carry a huge amount of it around. As a result, it has to be synthesized when we need it, meaning our body has to create it through a combination of different elements. How does our body create ATP? The ATP synthesis can come from either your body burning nutrients when there is oxygen present, which is known as aerobic, or from chemical reactions when there is no oxygen present, which is called anaerobic. The most ATP can be made from fat metabolism, but this process is very slow and therefore not ideal when working at a moderate to higher intensity. To give you an idea, the same amount of glucose and glycogen which comes from carbohydrates, only provides about a quarter of the ATP compared to the ATP synthesis from fat. While fat is more efficient at creating ATP, burning glucose or glycogen is roughly twice as fast. This is where the fat burning zone idea comes from. At lower intensities, the muscle can resynthesize enough ATP by primarily using fat, but as intensity increases, the rate at which ATP is used also increases. To keep working at the higher intensity, the rate of ATP resynthesis has to match it. This higher intensity will switch the energy turnover from fat towards the use of glucose or glycogen from carbohydrates, which again resynthesizes ATP faster than burning fat, but it's not as efficient. Similar to a hybrid car, when needing to be more efficient, it will use electricity, but when you slam on the pedal, it will use gas to get it moving faster. In this case, fat is the electricity, while glucose and glycogen is the gasoline. Time to wrap it up here. Let's look and compare the two different ways that ATP can be created. First, the anaerobic pathways are capable of regenerating ATP at high rates, yet they are limited by the amount of energy that can be released in a single bout of intense exercise. In contrast, the aerobic system has an enormous capacity, but is sometimes hampered in its ability to deliver energy quickly. To subscribe, click the circular icon in the middle. And to watch another great video, click over to the right. Thanks for watching.